Stefano, let's begin with a state of the nation of Formula One, if you like, an overview of the season ahead. What are you expecting? Well, actually, Martin, thanks for that question. I think that, uh, as always, uh, every time, every year, when we start a new season, uh, there is something that uh, has to be taken to another level, thinking about the strategy and where we are today and what we should be in the future. I think that today, for one, is a great moment. Uh, thanks to everyone, I think that uh, F1 never been so strong. We see that in terms of, uh, of uh, what we can see around the world, in terms of uh, growth of our audience, uh, younger audience, uh, more diversified audience. We can see that uh, with regard to the attention of partners, to the attention of new broadcasters and media wants to you know, develop the news of from around the world. We see because we have uh, new promoters, we see because we have so many requests from all around the world. And I think that these are all signs of a great health of Formula One. 23 Grand Prix, including six sprint races, 29 starts. F1-wise, what are you most looking forward to in 2023? On the track, a uh, super exciting season. Uh, we really hope to see uh, wheel-to-wheel uh, driving. You are the, the master on that. You know that this will make you know, the excitement uh, of everyone looking at the uh, on the track, on the action, on, on the drivers. And this is really what I really hope to see. And I'm sure that the basis for this are there. We have already seen something last year uh, with the new technical regulation that allowed the drivers if the, uh, you know, to be closer and to fight. And we had incredible events in Grand Prix last year that I really hope that next year, with another year of evolution of this car, even if there will be some changes on, you know, mainly on the floors and so on, uh, I'm expecting to see that happening on the track. One of the big stories is going to be the Las Vegas Grand Prix. That's big for F1, isn't it? Well, I think so. I mean, uh, it, it will be big because I can uh, tell you what I'm living since last year when we start to prepare that, uh, that, that event. It's getting huge in the U.S., is a, a serious investment on liberty from our shareholder because, as you know, we are really totally dedicated to show that there is the right place to be uh, to develop the sport in the United, United States. So it will be great. I can tell you that everyone wants to, wants to be there. And we are preparing that in a very professional way because we know that there will be, you know, the lens that will be quite big there. And uh, we need to be in a place that, was, that is not used to have that kind of event. You know, Vegas normally in the different resort is great to organize a local within the, the, the different casinos, the different hotels, but uh, this will be the first big event that will be basically uniting everyone around Formula One. Red Bull's aero penalty because of the cost cap issues, uh, how much do you think that will affect their performance in 2023? That's a good question because uh, if you hear uh, teams, uh, everyone has a different opinion. Uh, of course, the debate uh, is really uh, relevant for the Federation to, to, to take on that because I want to respect the role that we have. We are the commercial right holder, they are the regulator. And I think that when we're talking about penalties that, by the way, were discussed within the teams where when the financial regulation will be done was always been, has been always a debate. I mean, it is a financial penalty with regard to a sporting penalty more relevant than one on the other. So I think that is a point on which uh, I, I see there will be a lot of attention this year. I see that, uh, first of all, we don't have to forget one thing, that uh, the step change of financial regulation for one has been uh, a step change in, 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 in the governance of that sport. Uh, and I was thinking that we could have even more problem to manage because the dimension of the complexity, it is really huge. Are you expecting any other teams to have breach the 2022 cost cap regulations? Well, I think that is a, a point of attention, mainly because what we have discussed together is that uh, for the credibility of the sport, this kind of uh, uh, action to check if everyone is respecting that rule has to be done earlier than later. So we are discussing, and this is uh, on the FIA side, uh, to make sure that the, you know, the control and the certification will be done much earlier because the effect on, and if some teams will be out of it, uh, has to be done in a proper way in the shorter time as possible to be, to be more credible. We see other sports uh, that uh, are tackling the financial regulation with, uh, in my opinion, uh, too long time for a reaction. And this is not good. But you must be hoping we don't have... It's quite a bad smell for Formula One, isn't it? Because if it looks like a team is... No, no, I agree, I agree with you. You must be quite nervous about that. 
I'm more than nervous. I'm, I'm pretty sure that everyone is understanding now what is the effect if there is something not going well in that dimension that is new. So I totally agree that the, the focus on this actually will be very big. Stefano, we have a bit of driver movement this year. Three new drivers coming to the grid, Nick De Vries, Oscar Piastri and Logan Sargent. But even more so, unusually, because there's only 10 teams, between team principals moving around and Seidel's gone, Andreas Seidel's gone off to Sauber, effectively, Alfa Romeo. The big one, of course, is Fred Vasseur going to Ferrari, a team, of course, you know inside out, and Mattia Binotto, a man you know very well, uh, moving on. Would you have done that? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, for the position that I have, I, it's better if I keep that, that, that what I think for me. Otherwise, everyone will take that uh, in a different way. For sure, well, what will be interesting is to see how they will react with different caps. Because, of course, when you wear a cap of a small team, you have to protect certain things. When you are on the other side, uh, you should have the same strategic vision uh, to protect the sport. But, of course, uh, you, you are managing a big team. So I'm sure that Fred is... Uh, is starting this new experience with an incredible uh, will to show that it can be effective as soon as possible. Uh, as I said, the dimension of the team is totally different. And as I'm, I'm thinking about Andreas, uh, the other way around, uh, as I'm thinking, you know, for sure, uh, the changes that uh, other teams are doing, uh, thinking in McLaren, uh, will have for sure an effect. Uh, and it will be important to see how, you know, the, 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 the different relationships will be wearing different caps, uh, and that's something that I'm fascinated to, to start to learn in the next days. I, of course, I'm in contact every day with everyone because it's important, as I said, I have the duty to give the vision to the sport and share that with the teams. And I will say that everyone, despite the caps, are really uh, dressing up to, to, to work for the better of the sport, not only for the better of the team. When you were at Ferrari, you had John Todd, Luca de Montezemolo, yourself, Ross Braun, Michael Schumacher, of course and winning world championships. Can one person, whether it's Fred Vasseur or Mattia Binotto, possibly cope with running Ferrari? I do believe that in this Formula One of today is even, I would say, much more complex than what it was in the past. One person has to have the duty to create the right team. And this is the only way to win. If you are able to have a clear organization, the right people that you trust with a clear role, that's the key of success. Alone, you can be important, fundamental for decision, but of course it will be more difficult, I would say. Looking at the driver lineup for 2023, it's Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso, the experienced, wise heads against a really strong group of young drivers coming in. Who's your money on? The old <laughs> guys or the new guys? Well, actually, uh... You will not believe, but I never bet in my life. So when I will be in Vegas, it will be hard to, for me to, to, to find a spot. And but seriously, it's difficult to say that because I think that uh, the, the drivers with uh, great experience will be effective on the grid, will have a great personality, uh, and of course they're going to fight up to the end. And if there will be the car that will allow them to fight, I'm sure they will be <laughs> in the front. You know them. They will be there up to the last minute. But the young generation drivers are very strong, uh, very motivated. And you see also in the way that they, they relate with the community. You know, uh, The young generation drivers are really focused on what they're doing, what they love. They understand the power of social media and how to attract more, more fans with them. But that is also great because they will attract undoubtedly fans to Formula One. Looking ahead, Audi and Ford have committed for 2026. It appears Honda is staying now as well. That's great news for Formula One. Yeah, I think so, Martin, because if you think that uh, uh, just a couple of years ago, uh, we had to change the regulation in order to allow teams to have more engine from a, a single engine manufacturer, because otherwise we, we would have a problem. And now we are uh, in a situation where, uh, you know, two very important manufacturers are joining, maybe some other. I don't want to say anything, but maybe, you never know. And, and this is great. Of course, the focus will be to keep the right balance between teams, constructor, manufacturer, to shape the sport in the right way that we want. The technology has been always a significant part of Formula One, but uh, technology is not enough. To believe that only technology is, uh, uh, or only uh, technology can be connected to Formula One would be a mistake. We are a sport 
entertainment where technology is part of it. We are not just a dyno R&D test for manufacturer because the, 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 the emotional side, if you miss that, the sport will collapse. So that is great news. Everyone is coming because I believe that everyone is recognizing the power of today of Formula One and also the right, I believe, choice in terms of technology that are related to our uh, hybridization and uh, sustainable fuel approach versus the future. So I think that's the mix of the reason why we see such an incredible attention from the manufacturer coming from Formula One. Porsche, they had the near miss with Red Bull, who have gone with Ford now, of course. Is that over with Porsche coming back to Formula One? It would be easy to say for me, just check with them. But, uh, uh, but I think that Porsche is really thinking if there are opportunities that can, can be available for them. Of course, the more the time is passing and the more difficult it is to be effective with a technical and a commercial proposition. Uh, but I really hope that we can have, have some more news in the short term. That's new power units. Let's talk about new teams. With, with my fan cap on and my TV cap on, the Andretti dynasty on the grid with General Motors and Cadillac. Surely that's going to be welcomed with open arms. What's not to like about that? No, first of all, we are very welcome of everyone that is bringing value to the racing. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, you are talking about Andretti, who, who I know them very, very well. Of course, Mario uh, and Michael uh, since many, many years. Uh, that is not a problem of, uh, of not welcoming, because that has been a wrong, uh, a wrong uh, wording. I think, you know, we need to respect everyone. I mean, there were teams like Mario Andretti and Michael Andretti that were very vocal about their will to enter in Formula One. In my view, not uh, smart to say that the teams are greedy to protect themselves, but that's my opinion. Uh, but there are others that are much less vocal that would like to come in Formula One. So there is a process to respect. And uh, we will make sure, together with the FAA, that the process will be respected. And if the, all the elements are there, they will be very welcome. There will be a lot of dimension to consider. And uh, we don't have to overreact because someone is pushing the system. We need to, to take action because, as you know, I believe that today what is more vital is to protect the growth of the sport and also the sustainability of the team that have invested in for one in the in the times where things were different. So the value of, a, of that investment today for the pure commercial point of view is much more different than it was just a couple of years ago. So I think that the process that will be done will be done seriously in the right way. And no one can put that with the anxiety to take the right decision because someone is shouting and some other is, is, is less shouting. I do believe that, uh, you know, this is a, a great sign that for one you know, is becoming the center of a lot of attention for someone that before was not really very attracted by us. Have the Andretti's played a poor hand, being aggressive openly in the media? Have they annoyed you? Uh, I've discussed that with them very openly, and, uh, and, I, th and I said to them that I would have acted in a different way. Uh, with five Northern American races, adding in Mexico and Canada, of course, yeah. Having an American team, another American team, we've got Haas, of course, but would be quite attractive, I imagine. Well, yeah, but um, I, I would say we need to be prudent. I mean, uh, as I said, it seems that there is a personal uh, uh, negative uh, attack on Andretti. That is not the case, by the way. It's not the case. We need to be serious and professional in, in evaluating all the elements. And, and uh, uh, you know, now more and more, if you're able to join the, the family of one, you, you need to be really strong in terms of sustainable plan for the future. What has been one of the problems of the, of, the, of, the, of the past years? You know, we had so many things coming in and coming out, and we need to make sure that we protect that for the future, for the best of the sport, and that's it. It seems clear to me that over the last year, there's been some friction between the FIA and Formula One, a little bit of positioning as to who's really running this show. Well, I, I think that, you know, we, with Mohammed Ben Suleim coming as a new president last year, it was clear that uh, as normal, when there is a new president coming into a place, there is a, a manifesto that he has to respect because that was his proposition in front of the, of the members that has voted him. And that there is the need to, and the time to adjust, to have the right team, to assess the, the right role within the FIA with regard to what is the role in, in the F1 championship. And, uh, uh, there's no secret to say that the, 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 the key of success of our sport is to have everyone doing his own job and, and making sure that we do it in the right way for the benefit of the growth of the sport. 
any kind of personalism, any kind of thing that uh, is not helpful for that, it doesn't make any need to comment because, uh, as I said, we have all the interest to make sure that our sport is growing. And we have to do a better job as a commercial holder. Uh, the, the team and the driver has to do their own job to make that in the right way. And the same is for the FIA that has one year to develop, to grow, to work on a new team and they have to deliver the, the job because everyone put his credibility on the hands of the other. We are all united on that. If someone is not doing the right job, it will be a problem. The President, Mohammed Ben Salem, you mentioned, has made some very punchy comments, but it appears that he's now stepping back from the day-to-day -day FIA aspect of Formula One. How do you feel about that? Are you pleased about that? No, I think we discussed with Mohammed uh, on that respect. Of course, uh, he is the President of FIA. Uh, the President of FIA is a big role. I mean, uh, he has uh, many championships. He has uh, a big role with the mobility. And I think that his action would be to stay connected with the strategic level, as it should be, and there will be people running the day by day, as we have in our organization. So uh, I'm expecting, of course, as always, to be in, uh, on touch with him uh, in order to discuss the future of our sport for sure. Liberty, the owners of F1, who you work for, of course, sent a very punchy legal letter that was um, leaked a little bit uh, to, to the president. Was that the final straw? No, I think that it was important to, to, to clarify the role of each of us and and I think that uh, there's no other things to comment because I think that uh, you know as I said we need to stay focused on what we believe is right for the growth of the sport and uh, we believe that uh, if uh, even if it was just uh, let's say a news that was not a news if I may say uh, the value of our sport is growing we should be all happy because that means that we all are doing a great job. If we think back to Abu Dhabi 2021, the, the fiasco there, and through some other issues that have happened, you know, Max not understanding whether he was the world champion or not in Japan, and uh, any, any number of things. They need tidying up all of those aspects. We can't, we can't let the fans down like that. I would say a strong word, we will, because I feel that everyone has to do his own job, but, and the credibility of that is really related to all of that, making sure that uh, there will be no holes on that. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's true what you're saying. I mean, uh, these things uh, uh, shouldn't happen. And, and for the benefit of the sport, we need to make sure that everyone is doing his own job to clarify that. Uh, we, won't, we will support anything because, the, as I said, just for us that are very technical, uh, we can understand what is the FIA, what is uh, FOM. We have Formula One. Formula One has one brand that uh, is, uh, and, and the credibility of this brand is, is really related to the, the one that uh, has to do the perfect job in the role that they have. One of your key personnel, Steve Nielsen, with your blessing, has now moved to the FIA. Uh, is that important to, to increase the working relationship between the two? I think this is a sign, once again, that we're working very close together because it's important that uh, we, we have people that are understanding you know, the needs for all of us to work for, for, for a great uh, sport. Uh, and, and we know that uh, has been a, a lot of discussion in, in that respect, and that is very important to do a step forward. And that will show once again that uh, united we can do a, gra a greater job, and that is the only way to go. The FIA put out a tender for new teams to apply. What's the process? Who decides whether new teams come into Formula One or not? The rights holders? yourselves, the FIA, the teams, what's the process? The process, well, the tender is not out yet. It will be out soon because we have to decide together. Uh, of course, there is a, a sort of grid that has to be prepared. We're going to do it together. And, and uh, this will be out very, very soon, I think, at the beginning of March. One of the things the president commented on uh, was the potential sale price of Formula One. Is Formula One for sale? Well, that's a question that you should ask to my shareholder, but I don't think so because uh, we are investing in Formula One. You see what we put in terms of real money, in, for example, in Las Vegas. We bought a piece of land of 240 million. To, to, we are building new, new facilities there, so we're going to invest more than half a billion there. So we are very, very happy, uh, and uh, I'm connected with my shareholder every week. I mean, uh, it's uh, really the jewel of their portfolio, and uh, they really feel very comfortable what we are doing. Of course, if you look at the value, the value has been phenomenal because I think that we are delivering a good job altogether. So I don't think that is on the table of my shareholder. What exactly is the role then of the FIA in Formula One? Is it 
regulator and police or, or more? I mean, as you know, very simple, you know, the, in terms of ownership, the FIA is a champion owned by Formula One, by, sorry, by the FIA. Yeah. But in the 100-year agreement that has been sold to commercially, so that uh, they are really the regulator and, and they are the one that together are shaping the sport with us. And, and you know, I don't want to take in the fact that, uh, you know, uh, it seems that we are here to fight one against the other. If this is the approach, we'll be totally wrong. And I will, uh, I will protect that because, uh, you know, I have a bigger picture. You know, I want to have a vision of that sport. I'm not here. You know me, I'm not an ego man. I don't care about it. I want to make sure that we all grow together because it's such an unique opportunity to do that that would be totally wrong to start to create the castles around who is the best, uh, who is the worst. So this is really sometimes it's good, like I am, to be over the scramble and to say, well, well, what is happening? Stay, stay cool, stay focused, have a, a vision. Not, I, don't, I will never be involved in any kind of uh, punching inside the scrum because that, that, would, that is not my role. I'm bigger than that. The FIA declared that drivers cannot make political, religious or personal statements or comments without prior written permission. Where do you stand on that? If the drivers want to make a statement in the pre-grid process, as we've had before, or like Seb Vettel wearing a, a strongly worded T-shirt, is that going to be acceptable going forward? What's your position? My position is very simple. We were the one, with, we raised as one to promote, you know, uh, discussion using our platform in the right way. I mean, I do believe that it's not a problem of putting uh, something on the mouth of the driver that will prevent the driver to, be, uh, to communicate with the community. It's a matter of respect. Uh, what uh, I don't like is when you want to say something to attack another one that is wrong. There are uh, uh, also, as you know, when you were a driver, respect for the partners that you are working with. So it's, it's something that you need to be balanced as always in life. No one will put any, any barrier on that unless you're going to be uh, political, because we are sport uh, dimension. Uh, but uh, to, to highlight the attention on certain subjects uh, that are uh, at the center of the discussion of the, today's uh, comment, uh, there will be no problem in my opinion. And I'm sure that the FIA is sharing that view. We are all part of a SOE protocol. We need to respect that because that's, that's something that is very important. But uh, I would say that uh, there will be no change on what has been done in the recent year on the F1 giving the chance for us to talk about something more than the sport in the right way. So if Lewis wants to take the knee or somebody wants to wear a punchy t-shirt, you're cool with that? There are places where you can do, I mean, there is a respect of your partners. I mean, if you were a driver, as you do something that you, you need to know what, how you can be dressed. You know, there are things that has to be followed in the process. So I don't want to overstep in, in, in a place where we have a, a box ring. That is not the place. We all get feedback uh, from fans uh, and, and the public uh, about going to some Grand Prix where human rights issues uh, are raised and, and are a problem. Um, what is your position on that? Well, Martin, my view is also here quite simple. I think that uh, we do really care about uh, this issue. And we have also, uh, in our contracts, very clear uh, articles that uh, if uh, uh, we see something that is not going to the right direction, we have immediately the, the benefit of stopping our relationship. There are independent auditors that are following that, but uh, I do believe once again that the, we are much more powerful if we are going in places where they are showing real will to change. And uh, the spotlight of Formula One will help the speed of change to be faster. So if we're not happy with the way human rights issues have developed in a country, you'll pull the Grand Prix, like you did in Russia? The answer is very simple, is yes. Let's talk about the F1 Academy. Yeah. Uh, a, a program to develop female racing drivers uh, with presumably the hope of them being in Formula One one day. Well, that's a, a new chapter that we just started and we're going to share some good news hopefully very, very soon. And uh, that shows once again the level of responsibility that we want to take in, uh, in, a, in a new dimension that we do believe is very important. And uh, you may say, why us? Because that's, uh, someone has asked uh, that question, you know, should be the responsibility of others or the Federation to develop the RAS Growth, uh, you know, driving school? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no, but uh, for sure, 
we will be involved in that. And as always, you know, when you want to start a project, you need to have a good strategy and you need to be real and realistic. You know, we need to make sure that we create the foundation to allow young girls to start driving in, in, in a dimension they can feel comfortable to, to fight one against the other and then be ready for the next step that is going into the formula that we have uh, when they would fight with the boys. And I think that is a process that will take time. I'm, I, I want to be realistic, but the energy and the, the, the investment that we're going to do in that not, uh, all around the world, because that we have a program to develop and we will explain you know, the, the, the points very, very soon, will be effective in a, in a shorter term. Uh, we take that uh, as, a, as a sign of, uh, of uh, what Formula One wants to deliver in terms of uh, action. Uh, we can do that because we are strong and I think that uh, the, the, the platform using the F1 Academy could be really very important for girls that by the way now are following for one in a much bigger number and uh, to allow them to be passionate about our sport. We need to take uh, the right technical car, the right age, the right sporting dimension and of course the right package and we will promote that in order to help that to be as I said, effective uh, as fast as possible uh, with, the, with the help, of course, the Federation, with the help of the Karting Federation, because that is crucial at the beginning. And there will be some other news that we're going to share soon on that respect. Will there be a sort of a tangential program for technicians, engineers uh, to come through as well with, with the... Yes, yes. I have to say that on that respect, already F1 teams, in terms of their diversity approach uh, versus our business, has started, and you see uh, visually, to have uh, women in, 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 into the teams uh, as an engineers, as mechanics, as technicians. And this is great. This is part of our diversity and inclus inclusion program that we are pushing together. So I think that this uh, F1 Academy will even boost that need because, as I said, we are focusing as, uh, on the drivers, but they are not only the drivers. There is this ecosystem of for one that wants to have another big push from a culture need of, 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 of a change with respect of having uh, women uh, giving their input for for one. And by the way, here in for one group, you know there are a lot of women that have very important and significant role that they are shaping our job together. When you hand the baton over, whenever that may be, what do you? hope to have achieved in that time where do you see formula one i see you know our sport uh, fighting for the in the biggest league in terms of sport business entertainment it, we are shaping uh, this sport in, in, in it, that is not only the sport as you know is creating a, a great b2b relationship is creating an incredible intensity around us we are having different world that are coming in F1 because that's the place to be. We have uh, music, we have, uh, we have business, we have partners, movie, we, we movie have movie. Group. So that's really what I want to see uh, this growing. Let's talk about you. The grass does not grow under your feet. You're all over the world all the time. Enjoying it? Yeah, I would say I'm enjoying it. I'm, as you know, I'm, if I don't enjoy it, I, have, I would say the privilege of saying, well, that is not anymore my time. I think that I want to share my enthusiasm. I want to share the fact that if you don't lead by example, you're not effective. Uh, and I really enjoy to shape this sport in the way that I believe everyone has to give a contribution. It's not anymore the time of one man that is shaping everything. It's the time, I believe, for someone, in this case me, that has to make sure that the system is growing. And everyone feels that as a responsibility because uh, I said to our people here, we need to think big. And if you don't think big, and if you don't have the right people around that think big, it will be very difficult. But uh, as I said, I, I feel blessed and I'm very, I'm very proud of being in this position in this moment because uh, it's a unique experience, private and professional, in, in a great moment of my life. You're starting year three as the boss of F1. Any regrets so far? Maybe regret is a big word. But, uh, of course, uh, in my personal approach of the things, in my debriefing, let's say, approach, there, uh, there are things that uh, uh, I will do differently in the future, and I will uh, act differently, but that's part of a normal 
learning curve, but uh, no big issue in terms of big regret. Give us a for example. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going too deep in that discussion. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I always put myself in front of the mirror, you know, and, and I'm always trying to get out from myself the best. And, uh, and this is my approach. Good luck. Thank you.